Hey everybody, blessings of peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Welcome, Troy Brewer, Senior Pastor at Open Door Church in big time Burleson, Texas. And uh, you know what? I'm the director of Troy Brewer Ministries and a tribe here at Open Door. I'm so glad that you're joining me, joining me again today because today I got something really special for you. Um, this is going to be section four of my Supernatural Sanity special edition series in promotion of the extra chapters of my newest book, which is called Soul Invasion. Soul Invasion is a book that I wrote a long time ago, but we've actually just recently rebooted it with an entire section of a whole bunch of chapters on the kind of content that I'm going to be talking to you about right now, which is on the subject of supernatural sanity. Yeah, you're so going to dig this. Well, guys, in previous segments, we've talked about all kinds of things, but today I'm talking about I'm talking about the supernatural ability to be stable, being mentally stable and being emotionally stable. In the midst of all the lies of the media, which is, uh, is what I have to say to that, in the midst of all the frantic mess and the hysteria and the ridiculous nature, you know, what's real is you can just go down so many different rabbit trails that can make you totally unstable emotionally, mentally, make you unstable just concerning your own health. And then, of course, then your family's not stable. Then, then your walk is not stable. Guys, we're going to talk about the power of supernatural stability today. I want to start off here by showing you a verse. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, and I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. Ephesians 6, 13, therefore, put on God's complete armor that you might be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all that the crisis dis- that, having, uh, and having done all that the crisis demands, got it out, to stand firmly in your place. Guys, the ability to be able to stand is huge. Now, I've recently just got through uh, preaching a sermon series called Lead, Follow, or Get Out of the Way. And sometimes you're ahead of God. Like, I would never be ahead of God. Yes, you are. If you're going to go in the promised land, God's going to say, you go, and I'm going to back you up. Wherever, wherever you put your feet, I will give that to you. You go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then and then you will hear a voice behind you saying, turn to the right or turn to the left. That's what promised land living is. Or most of the time, though, the Lord is actually in front of us, which is great because that means that we are there to follow the leader, right? We learn how to become a leader by following the leader. But then there's sometimes, man, you're not tracking, you're not doing anything. Your job is just to stand. There is no advancement, but there certainly is not going to be any, any retreat. So your job many times to be the most victorious that you can possibly be is to be stable when everybody else is freaking out. Stability, to be able to stand. You do all that you can do, and you take care of the things that you are responsible for, and then after you do that, you stand. Now, the metaphor of standing has to do with stability in Jesus. Like, well, I don't know how this works, I don't know how that works, I don't know how this works. But I know that God is good. And that means that there are some things you have to be concrete in. There's some things that you're just not willing to give up. And one of those things is this, God is good. Here's another one. God is with me all the time. He's just as present when I can't see him as when, as when I can see him. Um, God does not hate my humanity, right? Uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus knows me personally, and I know him personally. Those kinds of things... You know, okay, the Word of God says this. Okay, well, whenever that happens, those things you got to stand in, and you can't be open to fudge on any of those areas at all. You just can't be willing to do that. There's all kinds of stuff that you have to be willing to change your lines, your 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 wine skin, and how you approach things. And many times you have to rethink all kinds of things. But there's some things you say, I don't know how any of this works, but I know God, and I'm not budging from this place. That is actually stability in Christ, and that is the metaphor of standing. Colossians 1, 2, 3, which is a 1, 2, 3 scripture. What does that mean? It means investment. Colossians 1, 2, 3 says that we need to be careful not to be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Okay? If any area of your life that does not have hope is under the influence of a lie. So it is so important that we go, uh, I'm not going to be moved away from the hope of the gospel. I'm sorry, I'm just not. I'm not going to entertain any thought that makes me hopeless. I'm just not going to. Okay, here's some other things. Ephesians 1.18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance are in the saints. So 
whenever I'm whenever I'm grabbing a hold of the promises of God, when I look at those 17 promises for him that overcomes, there's 17 of those, right? It's just like Psalms 91 has 17 verses. 17 is a is a biblical number in the kingdom, in the supernatural, that means overcoming victory. Well, one of the 17 promises that is in the book of Revelation for him that overcomes is one that says, and you shall become a pillar in my father's house, and you shall go no more out. Okay, well, that means when we're, when, once we get to heaven, we, it's our job to hold up the ceiling, you know? No. What does a pillar mean? If you look it up in a strong, exhausting concordance, it says one with legs. So when he says, you shall become a pillar in my father's house, it means this. You will always have stability in my father's presence, and you'll never move out of that place. And you shall become a pillar in my father's house, and you shall go no more out. I think that we need to have a lot more of that heaven in this earth and not wait until we die to become stable. See, that's supernatural sanity. That's the power of having supernatural sanity. A pillar in my father's house. The snake in the garden going all the way back to the very beginning of Genesis, right? The snake in the garden. You know what his curse was? He lost his legs. He lost his ability to stand. He lost his ability to be stable. A snake is anything but stable. That's why it always has to be coiled up. It has to protect its, its warmth, and it has to be in a position to where it can move quickly because a snake, has, a, a snake has no stability because it has no legs. Well, that's not you. That is not you, man. You, God Almighty has given you legs to stand on. So when it comes to supernatural sanity, we need to claim supernatural stability, that there's, there are default settings that you always go to whenever you start to get unstable. Oh, praise the Lord for that. Okay, so all of those Old Testament commandments where God warned people over and over again, do not take a wife from the daughters, for the daughters of the enemy. Why? He says this, because if you do that, you're going to produce more enemies and then your house is not going to be stable. And it's just so important that we understand that God wants us to be stable. He wants there to be true stability within within our own house. So he says this, if you get private with the enemy, you will reproduce the enemy. So if you have a lot of instability within your life and you're like, okay, I, I start, I wake up and I'm doing good and I get about halfway through my day and then I start to freak out. Okay, why are you reproducing enemies? Why is that? Because you're in bed with the wrong things. That's what all those scriptures are. So we have to learn that the intimacy of our secret thought life has to belong with him, has to belong to him. All these things, well, nobody likes me because when I was a kid, man, my parents didn't like me. Oh, I'm always going to be abandoned because my parents have abandoned me or somebody else has abandoned me. Oh, I'm, I'm never going to have money because I'm never going to have any finances because I've always been poor and I'm not very smart, all that kind of stuff. When you think those things privately, that's you being in bed with the enemy. And you know what it's going to do? It's going to produce more enemies. That's exactly what it's going to do. Listen, I'm going to get ready to sum this up. And I want to remind you that the reproductive part of your body is called your loins, right? Well, listen to what the New Testament calls your loins. He says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. What, 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 what verse is that? 1 Peter 1.13. Therefore, gird up the reproductive parts of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about your mind being a place of reproduction. So what you got to do is you got to get intimate with the Holy Spirit concerning your own thought life. And then you know what happens? You start to reproduce heaven instead of hell. That's why you need to meditate upon the Word of God. That's why you need to know the Word of God. That's why you need to have a list of your history with how God has shown up for you when nobody else has shown up. You need to have a list uh, and a history and a continual thankfulness. There's a big part of the discipline of your life that you mark these things. What are those things? They're, they're the interactions that you have between you and God, the promises that God has given you, the Word of God. Every time that you're reading the Bible and it jumps off the page and it makes your baby leap, boom. What, what have you marked in yellow in your Bible? What have you underlined? Your mind has to be full of those things. And what does it do? It, it reproduces heaven instead of reproducing hell. Okay, that's a good word. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you that you'll be able to stand that you'll be able to stand in the evil day, that, uh, that your mind will be right 
and that you'll be emotionally stable. I think probably one of the greatest blessings that we can be to people is in, especially in the midst of a crisis, is to be the one person that's stable when everybody else is freaking out. Can I tell you the people in your life that have made a tremendous difference have been people who were just stable in their love towards you when everybody else wasn't even sure if they loved you or not, or they still taught you something, or they still showed you something different in this very ugly world, and they're, they were steadfast and they were stable for you. So Father, I pray God in the name of King Jesus that our minds would be full of stability. God, that our thought life would be so stable that our emotions would be stable. Father God, sir, we repent of any kind of accusation that comes from the frustration of terrible feelings. We repent, Lord God Almighty, sir, of anything that says, oh, you know what, I'm mad at God because he wasn't here for me for that, or I don't know what's going to happen about this, and how does God expect me to, to be full of peace if this is going on? Father God, we repent of that, and we pray, Father God, sir, that you would give us a right mind concerning things. God, I love you. And I praise you, and I thank you, God, for having heaven be reproduced through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Good word. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, this is one part of one of the chapters that I have in my newest book that's called Soul Invasion. And I have a whole new, it's actually a reboot. If you have the old book, Soul Invasion, you don't have the new one that has the new section with chapters on supernatural sanity. Listen, you can see it right here, and you can order it through troybrewer.com, and there's also a workbook that actually goes with it. Yeah, it could be a valuable resource to you to help you finally have victory in your mind like you've always needed to. You know what you can do? You can also call 877-413-0888, and somebody is standing by right now to um, to take your order or just to pray with you. You know, we have, we have all these battle cry prayer cards. And if you need somebody to pray with you, if you're full of anxiety or something like that, you might just need to connect with somebody. Call us, 877-413-0888, and let us pray for you. Guys, if you want to continue to stand with me, man, you can by simply, you, you can do the text thing, right? And you can text the word T-B-M-I-N, as in Troy Brewer Ministries, T-B-M-I-N, to this number, 77977. Or if you'd like to send a check and say, Troy, I want to help you help people, you can send your check to Troy Brewer Ministries at P.O. Box 3775, Burleson, Texas, 76097. You can always go to TroyBrewer.com, or again, you can call 877-413-0888. Be stable, be strong, be full of the Holy Spirit. Reproduce heaven instead of hell. And until the next time, join me tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day, right on. Guys, we're going to continue to do these kinds of things. And until the next time, I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Tabitha with Troy Brewer Ministries. And if you love Pastor Troy's teachings, then you will love all of the content that he has available for you at www.troybrewer.com. This is a partnership. When you partner with us monthly, you gain access to all of his video content, all of his special interviews, everything that he teaches here at Open Door Church, as well as exclusive content, like when he goes out to the Alamo or whenever he goes to Israel. There's so much stuff available there for you. So I just I, I just challenge you, you know, instead of watching the news all day long during this time, instead of binging on a Netflix episode after Netflix episode, instead of figuring out what's going on with the Tiger documentary, why don't you go to www.troybrewer.com, partner with us as we rescue boys and girls from sex trafficking all all over the world. And when you partner with us on a monthly basis, you are gaining access to all of Pastor Troy's teachings and you're filling your head with some supernatural sanity during this time of straight confusion. So again, please partner with us at www.troybrewer.com on a monthly basis. We will rescue boys and girls from sex trafficking with the money that you use to partner with us at. Or you can just go to um, call 877-413-0888. We have operators standing by that will help you to sign up for Troy Burr TV where you can get all of this content and more. Hours and hours of filling your head with kingdom theology, kingdom thoughts, and with King Jesus. All right, you guys, thank you.